G'day everyone, Paradox has finally announced what the next DLC is going to be and as of right now there is a huge dev diary out outlining everything that's included so we're going to have a look through that today. The DLC is called Arms Against Tyranny and as you may have guessed it's going to be covering off the Scandinavian countries. It's going to include focus trees for Finland, Sweden, Denmark and Norway and it's also going to introduce us to the MIOs and international markets which we have seen a little bit about so far. They also tease that there's going to be some changes to the organization and design of divisions. They haven't really outlined any more of what that's going to be, but I assume it's going to be some of the changes to the support companies, which we've touched on previously. Uh, but maybe there's more to come. We'll just have to keep an eye out for another dev diary. In any case, let's jump in and have a bit of a look through at some of the features they elaborate on. Today's dev diary is mainly covering the historical aspects of Finland's focus tree, as well as some mechanics around the winter war and stuff like that. So we'll have a bit of a look. It's quite a large dev diary. So if you've not read it yet, I would encourage you to go and have a look through the whole thing. I'll link it in the description, um, but I'll summarize all the interesting stuff for you today. So this dev diary is already big enough on its own. So we won't be able to cover absolutely everything here. They do also say that there's going to be another dev diary coming over the, I mean, in the near future, which will touch on the non-historical aspects of Finland and their focus tree. But having an initial look through what they sort of briefly outline is going to be the case for the Scandinavian countries. So it looks like there's going to be a lot of freedom and creativity there. Uh, and then, of course, one of the things that I'm most anticipating, the international market, just being able to be a industrious arms dealer i think is going to be super fun as usual they've added in some pretty unique flavor things uh, specific to this country such as the finnish nat national spirit of sisu which if you don't know what sisu is i'll just let one of the most famous Finns explain what's sisu sisu in english means courage what is the what is the uh, finnish courage let me give you an example okay climb in a tree and jump down from there so that doesn't mean sisu that is the courage. That's stupidity. That is, exactly. One of the cool things about this national spirit is you're going to be able to adjust that quite a bit through the balance of power mechanics and also through different focuses. Uh, and yes, the balance of power mechanic is here to stay, it seems. I'm a little bit apprehensive about it personally, but I'll keep an open mind and be interested to see how it plays. To align with the revolving door that the Finnish residency seemed to be like at the time, you are going to have the option to have a lot of different leaders and that can either be done through the balance of power or just through pop-up decisions as well. And they've given us a bit of an example of some of the different leaders here that you can have uh, as well as some of their different uh, benefits, I guess. And yes, your boy Carl Man Manheim is here. So having a bit of a look at the balance of power and how this looks for Finland, it seems to basically be on a scale of how popular your leader is, uh, which is a bit more easy to understand than how it could be for Italy and uh, Sweden and stuff. The less public confidence that your leader seems to have, the weaker your Sisu spirit will be. But then the more support they have, the more trust they have, then the stronger that national spirit's gonna be and the stronger your country will be overall. Each of the leaders is gonna have their own personal agenda. Basically, when you fulfill the things on their agenda, that's gonna lead to greater public trust and sort of slide that scale more to the right where you're gonna want it to be. We can also see an example of what some of these personal agendas are. Pretty similar throughout here. A lot of it is like different ideology ratios. For Manaheim, being at war will actually increase your public trust. You can get him by forming a military government. So obviously it makes sense. He's a general, you wanna have him in power for that sort of reason. Having more than 95% stability for this guy is gonna increase your trust. So yeah, different things like that, which I think like things to do with stability could be incredibly frustrating, particularly while you're at war. I mean, obviously then that's gonna push you to change your leader, but I don't know. I think that maybe it will limit the creativity and the freedom of the player a little bit, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. One huge thing that they've added in as well is there is a bucket load of additional advisors and ones that we've not really seen before. And I think some of these go in, like they'll tie in with the MIOs and the for, like the market stuff, but we've got things like the master armorer, this, who knows what they do? I have no idea. A model what? I don't know. It's really cool. Um, keen to see a bit more of what these do. Uh, even things like the white chaplain potentially going something with the church. Corellian ear dentist rider. What? Yeah, I don't know. And there's also some military advisors, uh, some of which we've not seen before. For example, the German commander here, Nikolaus. Like, what is he going to provide benefits for? Like, maybe fighting the Germans or fighting with the Germans? Uh, like, yeah, who knows? Radio intelligence as well. That's a new one. Like, maybe coordination. Maybe it just increases the bonus you get from your radio techs. Uh, yeah, so I like it. 
Also, generals. Finland gets a heap of generals at the start of the game. And not only that, there is a new trait as well called Veteran Jaeger. Basically, they explain that represents any generals that trained with the Germans in the First World War and different things. Um, but look at the bonuses it gives you. 100% experience bonus to all of the terrain traits. That's mint. So you'll be able to get adaptable super easily, I would assume. Um, especially if you go like Grand Battle Plan and get the extra 20% experience to your terrain traits, you would just power through them. Really keen to play that. And obviously Finland is a bit at a disadvantage to the Soviets. So absolutely gonna need stuff like this, which is great to see. They've also given us a bit of a expanded look at the industrial designers and how that relates to the MIOs. So Finland has five now. And then having a bit of a look here, this is a bit of a work in progress early look at what the MIOs might look like. So what can we take away from this? I believe these icons here are sort of indicative of the kind of bonuses that are either gonna be available or that you have unlocked. So for example, if we look at this one here, maybe that's a faster production speed for your naval, like your naval dockyards, uh, the ammunition things, like maybe that's extra attack for these two types of ship classes potentially. If we look at the air force, that looks like extra attack potentially extra production experience gain so different things like that it obviously we don't know for sure but these are maybe some of the things that we can deduce from that and they've given us a bit more of a breakdown here of what the trees look like a lot of these seem to be kind of linear paths um, but you can obviously choose which one you go down so yeah keen for the, just stay tuned for the dev diary which is going to break down all the mios in a lot more detail once that's like finalized also they're making some map changes as well so adding in extra states shuffling around some uh supply yards and also adding extra victory points Points. So if we have a look at this map here, they've said that a lot of these are just like one victory point sort of things. Um, but yeah, a bit more indicative of areas that you might want to try and defend or hold. Will be interesting to see how this plays with the balance of power as you get pushed back. I would just really hate for you to not get pushed back that far. And then if your balance of power is quite low, it just ruins your chances of coming back. So we'll see. We also get a bit of a sneak peek at the historical form of what the Finnish focus tree is. And they've obviously grayed out all of the non-historical stuff. And this seems quite expansive, but not super deep, which I think is a good thing because there are some focus trees in Hoi, which just go on forever and ever and ever, and they take ages. They have clarified a lot of these focuses are gonna be like the short 35 day ones, which is good. I'll let you guys come in and have a bit more of a in-depth look at these yourselves, but well, the industry, there seems to be a lot of focuses which are going to give you access to resources as well as industrial capacity. They do say that, you know, if you prepare properly before the start of the Winter War, you should stand a really good chance of being able to hold off the mages and even push them back, adding two civilian factories and an extra building slot on each side, as well as increasing your infrastructure speed. Stuff like that is pretty strong and I'm sure there's more of that in there as well. There's that one focus, which then gives you access to your army, air, and navy trees, which surface fleet Finland, let's go. You guys know how much I love a surface fleet. So all of these focuses are gonna give you things like the Mannerheim line, for example, uh, extra defense, uh, increasing your production for your like air force and military, like increasing your stats in certain terrains and things like that, helping your supply and reducing the enemy's supply. Another thing that you can unlock through the focus trees are two unique support companies to the Finns. So one of them is Winter Logistics Company, which if you have a look at the bonuses here, it gives you a bit of defense and soft attack and stuff like that. But the main thing here, the cold acclimatization factor, as well as movement, attack and defense in snow. Those stats, 30% movement, 25% attack and defense. That is gonna set you so far above the Soviets that are attacking, that's going to be mint. The Winter War indeed is going to be very painful as a Soviet player, I can foresee. So it might just take a bit more than putting all of your troops on the border and just hitting go, I think. As a human fighting the Finns, it's going to be a bit tricky. You'll have to add some naval invasions and stuff like that as well, I think, to break them a bit easier. The other support company is Long Range Patrols, which they are basically said is a buffed Finnish version of Recon. Um, again, gives you a lot of movement and attack and defense bonuses at different types of terrain which i guess is to mimic you know those finnish dudes riding around on the skis and stuff which is quite cool um i like little unique things like that one of the more unique features about finland that they're adding in 
is the winter war mechanics. I don't know if it's like a set mechanic or just like different things you can do in the winter war. One of which is these moti tactics. Moti? Moti? I don't know. Uh, basically, it allows you to prepare different states before the enemy pushes into it, which is going to give your troops a bonus and massive penalties for the enemy as well. These things, I think, again, while holding back the Soviets, or if you are a Soviet player, man, good luck, because if the AI is smart about doing this, it's going to be very, very tough to push in here. But again, nice little things to help you hold off the Soviets and probably even end up pushing them back once they attrition themselves down to 10% strength. In addition to that, you can also set up weapons, cache, weapons caches in different states so that when the Soviets do capture them, it's going to increase their resistance, uh, increase their attrition, in beat the crap out of their garrisons and all that sort of stuff. So before the Soviets even come through a state, you can use the Moti, Moti, again, whatever thing to make it harder for them to take the state. And then once they do take the state, they're going to have an absolute nightmare holding it. So cool little features. It'll be fun to use them and see what kind of effect they have. One of the other coolest things about the Winter War is that if you capture and hold Leningrad for 30 days, for a month, you can demand peace negotiations from the Soviets. So they can refuse that. It will give them pretty significant penalties, as you can see here. Um, but if you also hold some of the Soviet states, like Mamansk and basically all that stuff in the top right there near their port, uh, they'll have to give you that to basically peace out all of this area. If you hold that, and then capture Leningrad, they'll peace out with you and secede all this territory. So if you're all good, you can get a nice big chunk out of the Soviets for, yeah, essentially punishment for them for fucking about and finding out. So there you have it. There's, again, I literally can't reiterate. There's so much stuff that we didn't even have time to cover today. If I touched on it all, this dev diary video would go for bloody 50 minutes. But go back and have a bit of a look through. I'll make some other videos on some of the other stuff as well. But let me know what you guys think. Are you guys excited for this? What are some of the ideas that you have of how you're going to go ahead and play it? And also, what's what kind of stuff do you guys want to see from the other countries that they're going to be giving more info on? But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below. Um, thanks for watching. Also, if you guys want to see when more my videos come out please subscribe and also hit the notification bell because subscribe doesn't really do what it used to so yeah thanks guys take it easy